tuning in, this is Optibotomus coming with another video review. And today we're gonna to be taking a closer look at the new Hot Toys MMS 278 Iron Man Mark 43 from the Avengers Age of Ultron. Marking what might be the very first time that Hot Toys has released a figure before the movies actually come out. And we'll get into the reason why that's the case here just in a little bit. Now, as you can see, this is the Sideshow exclusive version. That's the one that I got. Unfortunately, right now it is on the wait list. So if this is the version that you want, it's going to be a bit of a, a waiting process to see if you're actually going to be able to get them. But we'll cover the difference here in a little bit. But as you can see, really cool image. You got the uh, Mark 43 here in the background. It's got this clear plastic bit around it. If you have any of the other uh, die cast series figures, which this is a part of, you're very familiar with the box. It's got, like I said, this little clear plastic thing around here around the back. You got the cast and crew responsible for making the figure. You got that little A sort of thing. You come around here and you got a continuation of that image that's on the front with just this arm coming up and then now uh, you slide this off just like so and you got a little foam insert here which actually houses the figure sliding this off to the side and as you can see it says mark 43 and it's actually engraved in the foam itself so getting this out of here and then for this you just open this up and it uh, houses the figure within you can see that it's very heavy duty and very very protective so just setting that back in there just like so and then when you come around here to the actual back of it this is the section here that has things like of uh, the display stand the extra accessories things of that nature so that's what you have for the packaging and I, I really do like it it's a real nice way to protect the figure and it's the same material that they use to make the House Party Protocol Hall of Armor set. So if you have those, you do know that it is just styrofoam, but it is a very sturdy styrofoam. I mean, it's not really flaking off or anything. But for the packaging, that's what you have. So without further ado, let's get this guy out here and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have the Mark 43 opened up and out of its packaging. And starting off first, as usual, let's take a look at his accessories. One of the criticisms against the Mark 43 is that collectors feel that you don't get as much stuff as you did with the Mark 42. Now, I, I really don't agree with that train of thought, but what you see is everything that you get. Now, much like all other Iron Man figures in the past, the Mark 43 does have several light-up features. So that being the case, you do get some batteries that are a package in this little clamshell here separately that you do have to install. You also get a little screwdriver that you can use to remove the screws and put the batteries in. Now, as I mentioned, I do have the Sideshow exclusive version, which does include this helmeted head that has some battle damage, and I'll touch on this here in a little bit, but the light-up feature for this this obviously uses batteries. Uh, now, the problem is the batteries that you get are not enough for all the light up features that he has. If you get this set with this head and you put the batteries in it, you're going to be missing out on one of the other light up features. And that's a little bit unfortunate. So in my case, I have batteries in the, the battle damage helmet, the regular helmet, his arc reactor on his chest in one of his hands. So that's, that's for me, a little bit of a negative. I'm not very happy with that. Now, I mean, I can understand it just because you know they don't have to create a whole nother uh, clamshell here but it is disappointing that you don't get batteries for all the pieces that you really need now uh in, in addition to the two uh, fists that you currently have or that i currently have on the figure he also does come with two repulsor hands as you can see he's got that angled uh, wrist bit right there you got the clear uh, repulsor right there you also do get a both right and left uh wrist guard that is angled up so that you can see uh, facilitates that actual uh, blasting kind of look a little little bit more so you do have a both right and left hand for that and then you also do have a right and left articulated hand also with the clear uh, repulsor right there so when you do light it up you can see them very nicely on both of these hands obviously those ones don't have it it's just uh, a painted uh, section on the the palm of the actual fist but i mean it's in a fist so you don't necessarily need the light up repulsor thing uh, he does come with a uh, i'm not a hundred percent i guess it is it says right so I guess you would put it on your right arm. Uh, much like the Mark 42, you do have the display option of having his forearm opened up with a little missile right there. It does attach just via magnets. So if you do have the Mark 42, you're very familiar with that as well. So you do have that piece. Uh, you do get, like I mentioned, two regular heads as part of the, just the standard release. This one here has the same portrait that we got on the Mark 42, but no uh, blood work or anything on the actual face. 
So it's the same sculpt, just not all that blood paint that the Mark 42 version came with. And it, it is basically the same. I mean, even the helmet is exactly the same. Uh, we'll touch on some of those other differences on the actual suit here in a little bit, but obviously that doesn't light up. You got the magnets, well, you got the magnets right here, and then you got two little metal strips that allow you to uh, display, well, if my camera will stay focused on his head, it'll allow you to display uh, Tony with his face shield up like so. And it's really great detail. I love all that detail on there. I mean, that's really very neat. I love how they put that in there. Now, staying with the pieces that are included with this set, you also do get the, this really cool new display base. As you can see, uh, getting this out of the way, you got the Avengers Age of Ultron Mark 43 a nameplate with a real nice uh, silver brushed kind of plate. I do have the little plastic protector on there. I always leave those on there just to kind of keep that safe. But that's really neat. You have this very heavy duty uh, metal rod that helps to support the actual uh, die cast figure, which is really cool. But the best part about it is this. This is the Mark I version of Ultron. Now, much more damage than what we saw in the actual trailer, but this guy is really super, super cool looking. I'm really very impressed with how this turned out. Uh, it is semi-articulated, and by that I mean he rotates here at the shoulder, and he also rotates at the head, and that's it. The, that's all there is for articulation, but as you can see, you can just set it right there, and it's a really cool display piece here on this, the kind of rubble sort of actual display stand. But this guy is really neat. Great amount of detail in here. Really nice paint work on there. You got some wires down here kind of hanging off. Uh, if you wanted to, you can remove his head. Uh, you can take his arm. That can slide out. It just pegs in there, so it's nothing overly extravagant or anything. But if you wanted to create a, you know, a destroyed scene or something like that, you know, you can do that, I guess. It, it's definitely possible and it's uh, your personal preference, but um, we don't know too much about Ultron or how he's created yet as the movie is not out, but we have seen the Mark I version of Ultron uh, come out and really look pretty cool, but I love this. Uh, I mean, this helmet also looks really very evil. I mean, it is a very similar helmet to actually Iron Man, so you can speculate whatever you want. You got the Avengers logo right there on them so again speculate as much as you want the movie will be coming out here fairly soon so speculation won't be necessary too much longer but those are all the accessories that you get just in the standard version now if you do get the sideshow exclusive version you also get this alternate head sculpt which features a much more battle damage you can see some scorching on there coming in to take a better look at that you got some uh, i mean compared to well i don't want to pull his helmet off compared to this which is a much more a cherry red you can see that this has some scorch marks on there the actual face is a lot more dirty and obviously there's this big giant gash coming down his eye. Uh, this does have all the same detail on the inside. You do have the magnet on there. I don't know why you would want to actually do that, but you could if you wanted to. But the cool thing about this, uh, much like the regular helmeted head uh, that has the light up feature, taking this off, I don't like how they do this with it's such a pain in the butt getting at these um lights now but you pull this off and then you got this switch right here switching that on you can see a nice red light now without getting into spoilers or anything like that uh this is what you basically have as your exclusive version. It's a little bit harder to see here in, with all my lights on. From the front there, it doesn't really come through all that well. I mean, you can kind of see it just bleeding through there, but you can see that the light is just one LED right there at the center. So that kind of throws things off, but in hand, I will tell you that when you don't have all the lights like my little studio here, that does bleed through very nicely. I, I don't know if I can even, I mean, that's, it's so hard to actually see that. If you follow me on Instagram, I posted a picture uh, of an up close uh, look at this helmet and you can see that the red light does come through fairly nicely without all this extra light. So head on over to my Instagram. The link will be down in the description. You can see that picture, but uh, just taking this off, like I said, you, you do get all the batteries necessary to power everything. You just can't do it all at the same time. And if you don't get this helmeted head as part of the exclusive, and then just putting that back in there, all the batteries can be used on the regular figure in their normal configuration. But I like having this. And honestly, when I'm displaying my Iron Man, I, I don't have any of the lights on anyhow. So I I really don't need the batteries in this guy, but for his accessories, 
that's everything. Now, coming to the Mark 43 himself, there really isn't a heck of a lot that's different between this and the previous released the Mark 42. So, setting him kind of off to the side and bringing in the Mark 42, <laughs> this is why that they were able to release a figure before the movie actually came out. For all intents and purposes, the Mark 43 is just a repaint of the Mark 42. And obviously, the 43 version lacks some of the battle damage parts. Now, some people have complained this is a $30 more figure than the Mark 42. And one of the complaints is that they don't feel that that price is justified. Honestly, I... I, I really disagree. The only real difference between the figures is the Mark 42 comes with several battle damage parts. You got the battle damage here on his gauntlets, on his upper part of the shoulder, the damaged chest piece, and you got the damaged shoulder bits. And that's really about it. You take away all those, and what you're left with is basically the Mark 43. But the Mark 43 comes with this really cool display stand and this semi-articulated Ultron. So for me, I can see the price increase, and it really doesn't bother me all that much. And on top of that, they did do some improvements to the Mark 43 that I really do feel kind of finish the product. But the biggest difference visually that you're seeing is the color. Really, all you have is a reversal of the colors. On the Mark 42 here, you can see that the gold has basically been swapped and turned red here on the Mark 43. Now that's not true in all the aspects. I mean, there are some extra uh, differences, but for the most part, that's what you're basically seeing. Like for example, the chest where this is gold, this has been made red. The abdominal section here right down the center, this is gold, this is red. The outlining sections where this is red, this is gold. And then on the far outside, you can see those are gold and those are red. Like I said, basically that's, I mean, all you're really getting in terms of the differences, you come around here to the back and you can see it basically carries through as well. Now, you cannot use a lot of the battle damage parts that you had with the Mark 42 on the Mark 43. Uh, well, you can pull his head off quite the same and getting him to kind of stand. It's hard to make him stand on a curved surface. Uh, these pieces right here on his shoulder, while you could uh, replace those on the Mark 42 version, you got the battle damage ones right up there, at least right here. These are permanently attached now. Same with these shoulder pieces. Whereas these can just uh, detach just like so because they're little tabs that just sit in there. Uh, these are now permanently attached, so you can't remove them. Uh, the chest piece does still come off, but Honestly, uh, and it's kind of a pain in the butt to get it off, just pulling it off just like so. Come on, kind of keeping it pulled. There we go. Uh, you can see that the battle damage chest piece, it, I mean, it's mostly gold on there, so that really wouldn't look very good on here anyhow. But they did change the way that the arc reactor looks a little bit, so setting him here and zooming in. I don't know how well that's going to come across, but you can see that where this has a little bit more of a metallic silver paint in there, this is all like a clear translucent plastic look. Uh, you can see it primarily in the triangle section here, whereas that has that nice silver paint. This is just that uh, triangular clear plastic. So it is basically the same, but a little bit different. And you can see that the chest on the inside is exactly the same, so you don't get much of a difference with that. And like I said, if you wanted to, I, I don't know, I, I mean, I've never... I haven't done this yet, but you put that on there. I mean, I, I guess that doesn't really look all that bad. It, it is kind of weird, but I mean, it, it does, I mean, all the colors are the same. So uh, it, it would naturally match because like I said, the colors are the same, but I, I don't know why you would want to really do that. But like I said, you cannot put the, uh, the battle damage shoulder pieces or the uh, bicep pieces from the 42 on the 43. And then just to kind of show this a little bit, uh, setting him down and pop, oh, I'll bring this in there. I got uh, the battle damage head on there. The head sculpts are exactly the same. Those haven't changed at all. Uh, the biggest difference is this does not have the blood that this one has, so you get a little bit more of a clean portrait. But helmet wise, uh, these are the exact same. I'm mean, putting this back on there. Uh, again, you just get some extra paint details, a little bit more battle damage, obviously, on the 42 than the 43, uh, but the, the paint job for that is basically the same. They didn't really swap the colors or anything. They just made this a little bit cleaner of a look, and uh, I don't mind it. I, I think it's cool. I, it, I'm i glad that they included a Robert Downey uh, portrait for this, so that works. But uh, setting him off to the side, I'm gonna keep him on here because there's a couple other actually changed pieces 
on the Mark 43 that had been altered from the 42 version. But for starting off for his articulation, the, the head is on a ball joint right up here. You also do have this uh, lower section right here that can rotate. You can remove this and you, if you have a, a separate Robert Downey Jr. just head by itself, you can put it in there and have a full unhelmeted version. Uh, the shoulders here, these are great. You can see that they extend out allowing for a nice range of motion forward and back. These move up and they move down. There's on there's two joints. You got one joint here and then you got one joint here. So you get a nice range of motion. He rotates here at the upper part of the bicep. He's got two joints here at the elbow and then obviously the wrist are on ball joints. So you get a nice range of motion there. One thing that uh, the Mark 42 had a lot of problems with were the shoulders. Now, I touched on this a little bit in my 42 review, but what they basically did is they went in here and they changed this. Instead of what looks like a metal piece here in the center, it's plastic. So you don't get that same friction that was basically created by rubbing the pieces together and a lot of people they'd go like this and it would damage the shoulder break it off it would warp the plastic on the inside there kind of superheating that rubber and then making it warp fortunately my 42 really didn't have that problem but a lot of people did and they did go in there and change it and that is updated so i like seeing that that's really very nice uh, getting these arms out of the way but i mean great amount of amount of range of motion with this guy uh, the waist here you can rotate here yeah, the upper part of the bicep moves a little bit but then you can actually take it and extend it and I love how when you extend it it kind of fills in the gap you don't even notice it and then you can get a little bit of side to side motion with it some forward and back really really very nice collapsing that back down the hips move forward and back but what you want to do is lift this and this you can get a forward motion just like so you can move it back like that can move it in and out rotates here at the upper part of the thigh he's got two bends here at the knee itself and then what you can actually do for this now this is where i'm going to bring this back in uh, they also change this piece a little bit come on stand and there we go this back section right here was all rubber this is actually now all a hard plastic and the button um it, it was kind of funny you, i mean like i said you got a rubber piece right here you got to push this little button in to get that uh section that detaches and comes down just like so then you push it back and you hold it like that getting him positioned this now is different like i said this isn't a rubber piece whereas that was all rubber and the button is actually now kind of on the outside whereas this was a little bit underneath that rubber but you just push this in and you detach it i think it's a much better use of uh, this mechanism and not having it be rubber like that i think it'll make it last a little bit more so you can angle this obviously getting that a much higher range of motion here in his waist area and creating some iconic poses such as the uh, the ground pound thing or whatever putting that right back up so you get a lot of range of motion with the articulation here and then the actual ankles come down and they detach and slide out so you get a little bit more of a forward motion with it they also pivot side to side but you then collapse that back up and now you can see you get a little less range of motion with it. So all that possibility is there. I love, like I said, that they actually took the time to not only just repaint it, but visit some of the problems that the 42 had and really update them and make it a better piece. Now, like I said, I mean, this is the helmet here that can light up. You can have that. You do have this. All you have to do is pull the ball joint off. You can swap that on there. It's personal preference. Both of these helmets are pretty clean. There's really no battle damage on there. There's a few scuffs, but nothing really out of the ordinary. I mean, you just got some regular weathering on the rest of the figure, and that's kind of what is also on the helmet itself. If you do get the side to exclusive version, you do get the much more battle damage one with the, the cracked faceplate right there, and then obviously you have the red eyes. Again, I'm not going to spoil what those red eyes mean, but you just pop that back on there and you can have that. So if you do that, or if you do get that, you do get three head sculpts, which I, th I think is really cool. Uh, you can take uh, this piece right here. If you wanted to, uh, I, I shouldn't say that you can't use the battle damage pieces from the Mark 42 because you kind of can. These arm pieces are basically the same color on both the Mark 42 and Mark 43. So if you wanted to take those battle damage pieces from the 42 to put on here, at least in terms of the forearm pieces, you could. So uh, you can see that just detaches like that they're on magnets and then you just put that on there collapse that around uh, don't have a head on them because that would I, I guess 
makes some sense to do, but there you have it. I mean, it, it, it really is a, a great, great piece. Now, ultimately, what you decide to get is going to be on, you know, your entire personal preference of things. I, I really do like the Mark 42. Uh, oh, I'm, honestly, because it is a different looking suit, uh, it, I, I really do have a, a thing for the the suits that look different. It's just one of those quirks about me. If you're a classic kind of Iron Man fan, I really think that this one is going to appeal to you. I know a lot of people were really like, you know, I'm, I, I like the Mark 42, but I'm not going to get it. I'll wait for them to do a repaint of it in the, uh, you know, regular Iron Man colors. And those people that decided to wait, here you go. But bottom line is I really absolutely love this. The actual armor itself, I've always been a big fan of. I really like how, for example, the Mark 42 just by itself looked. The coloring also never really bothered me. As I said, I like collecting those kind of off the wall color suits. I mean, things like the Peacemaker, the Starboo, Silver Centurion, Python, all really very much appeal to me. So that kind of different look for Iron Man really was cool, and I, I liked having that 42. But the 43 really does take it a step above. I mean, there's no mistaking just that iconic look for Iron Man, and this really does have it. Now, as I touched on, the price is something that some collectors have complained about. It is $30 more than that Mark 42, but I feel that you are getting more with this. I mean, granted, you don't get the battle damage shoulder pieces, the uh, bicep pieces, chest section, or the battle damaged uh, forearm pieces, but with this stand and this semi-articulated Ultron figure, I really do think that that price increase is warranted. In addition to that, I like the changes that they actually made to very parts of the actual design. Fixing the shoulders was something that they did with the subsequent releases of the Mark 42, so I'm happy to see that that carried through and was implemented in the Mark 43. And then replacing the rubber piece on his butt section makes it a little bit easier to push that button and you're not constantly rubbing on that rubber, you know, potentially, you know, putting any kind of stress or stretching that rubber or anything like that that might damage it over time. I think the plastic is just a much better design choice. One thing that I'm also noticing is that the joints on mine feel a little bit tighter. Uh, you, the thighs right here don't rotate as easily as they did on the previous Mark 42. So at least on my piece, it feels like some of those QC issues were improved upon, and I really do appreciate that. But overall, this guy is great, and I cannot wait to see it live in action. So all that being said, if you'd like to add this guy to your collection, all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to Sideshow Collectibles where you can pick this guy up and add him to your collection today. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optibotamus. Don't forget that you can keep in touch with me by liking my Facebook page at facebook.com slash teambotamus and by following me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash optibotamus. Also, I'd encourage you to check out my website at optibotamusreviews.com, where you can see all my videos from the previous week, see what I have coming up for future release, and also get your very own Optibotamus t-shirt. And finally, I'd also really appreciate it, guys, that if you like this review, don't forget to please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.